Hello doll fans and welcome back to 2001. Honestly, I am so excited about this video. I have been collecting loads of unopened early noughties iconic dolls so that I can open them on camera and we can take a trip down memory lane. Honestly, today it feels like it's Christmas morning. 2001. All your favourites are here. I hope you are ready to feel nostalgic with me. And at the end of the video, we're going to go back through all the dolls I've opened and rank them. I'm going to decide which ones are my favourites. And obviously, I encourage you to let me know your thoughts and feelings on these dolls, these iconic dolls, in the comments below. If you love dolls as much as me, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check me out on Instagram. By the way, most of these dolls are discontinued as well. Ever since I made my discontinued doll line series, um, I've wanted to make a video like this where I open discontinued dolls. Now anyway, let me show you some of the dolls I got. I have obviously a Funk and Glow collection Bratz. This one's Yasmin. Because a Naughty's doll collection would not be complete without a Bratz doll. Um, and we have their number one rival, Mycene. This one is from the birthday, club birthday collection. Um, this is Noli. I cannot wait to open this doll. This is my first ever Mycene doll, you guys. This is a big deal. We have a Diva Star doll. Oh my goodness, this box has seen better days. Let's put it like that. This is also my first Diva Star dolls. I thought they were bigger. Maybe I was just smaller. That would make sense. We obviously have a Polly Pocket, a Fashion Polly. You know, the ones with the like kind of stretchy rubbery clothes. And I can tell already I'm going to lose those shoes instantly. They're like this big. We have a Flavors doll. Flavors. <laughs> now, I actually had one of these dolls when I was a kid, but I cannot remember which one I had, which is unlike me. Normally, I have like a catalog memory of all the dolls I've owned. But I think because I didn't really like her, even when I was a kid, I kind of recognized these dolls as a bit of a stereotypical, like cliched example of like urban fashion, like streetwear. But you know, they're still quite nostalgic. <laughs> Look at the graffiti down the side. And we have a Betty Spaghetti. This one's actually been opened, but I thought I'd show you her anyway. And I have some What's Her Face dolls. They're not in the packaging. These dolls are so creepy and I cannot wait to show you them properly. I feel like we have to start off with the queen. The queen of the early noughties, the Bratz dolls, the girls with a passion for fashion. Um, let's take a slightly closer look at this packaging. Um, this doll is actually numbered. This is number, I can't even say that number, it's like 048674 of 120,000. So um, really, really exclusive. This is limited edition Funk and Glow. Uh, I love the kind of iridescent back of the box, very cool. And all of her accessories are like beautifully displayed. I live for these illustrations. They kind of remove, remind me of groovy chicks. If I ever do a follow up to this video, I have to include groovy chicks, don't I? Was that what they were called? Groovy chick or groovy girl? Groovy girls. That's something different. Anyway, <laughs> if you can think of any doll lines I should include in a future video like this, let me know. And you can see their different outfits and the different dolls you can get in this line at the bottom here. And there's a list of all the stuff it comes with. Um, so exciting. Now let's have a look at Noli's box. There's actually an advert for Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> she appeared in one of the Mycene movies around this time. She's kind of a bit problematic. And I even remember her being a bit problematic when the film came out. You know, it's fine. She's still going to be incorporated in a kid's toy line. I am excited to open my very first Mycene doll, although I always thought of the Mycene dolls as a little bit inferior to the Bratz line. What do you guys think? Their clothes are just a little bit more mumsy than the Bratz. Um, they weren't as funky, but this dress is still really cool. She comes with a, like, diamante transferable tattoo, which obviously I'm going to have to put on. There's this image on the back of the Bratz, not the Bratz, <laughs> whoops, um, the Mycene dolls. It's a teen scene, and you can see all the dolls illustrated here. I just don't like the illustrations as much as well, but they do remind me of the Mycene website, which was, you know, my favorite thing to go on during ICT at school when I was a kid. Um, the games were hilarious and fun, and honestly, I play like one of the like fashion design games and think I was had like a future as a fashion designer. No, no, or a makeup artist. <laughs> and you can see here Noli's getting a car for her 16th. This was right around the time that My Super Sweet 16 was like really big, so I can understand why they were like trying to play into that a little bit. 
Now let's have a closer look at the um, Diva Stars box. This box kind of looks like it was made in Microsoft Paint. I love the gradient down here, the rainbow gradient. She's really nicely displayed. Um, now these images on the back just look so busted. I don't know, they just don't look very good, these illustrations. They are definitely not on par with the Bratz or my scene. I think this one's my character, her name's Alexa. She's into dance music, check out her moves. Well, since this doll has literally no articulation, I don't think she's gonna have any amazing moves. Um, I also doubt very highly that these are still gonna work after all this time. I swear they used to be bigger. Am I losing my mind? There's a try me button, but so far, oh. She's just going blip, blip. Um, great. Now the flavors doll, like I said before, I thought this was a little bit um, kind of cliched, this view of kind of urban fashion, but there are elements of this outfit I quite like. I like her Adidas trainers. She's got loads of articulation. Even the name flavors was a little bit cringe even then, I think. Her name is written here in graffiti and you can actually turn the box into a stand, it says back here, which is quite cool. You can see the other dolls in the line down here um, looking very sassy. And here is my little Polly. Um, I'm excited to open her. This packaging has definitely seen better days. Um, but this is meant to be like a spring fashion line and they all come with bonnets and stuff. Quite cute. Okay, doll fans, now it is time <laughs> for me to open these 90s dolls. Honestly, this feels like Christmas. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm gonna have so much recycling. Okay, doll fans, so it took a long time. It took a long time. But I have opened all of my iconic early noughties dolls, and I'm so, I'm surrounded by them. I'm so excited to show them to you. Um, first of all, we have to start with the true queen of the early noughties, the Bratz. And are we not living for the double denim? <laughs> now, this one is obviously Yasmin. I love these kind of like little space buns going on. Um, she's got glittery, massive, pouty lips, what the Bratz are famous for. She's got this very weird looking kind of feather duster bag. Love it. I like the ruching on her top. And then she kind of looks like Quasimodo because there's a massive battery pack back here which makes the jacket light up, but it's not working because the batteries are about 20 years old. Fair play. I always thought her icon was kind of weird. It's meant to be a princess, um, but it looks like a frog. Wait, maybe it is meant to be a frog. All of the denim is like covered in glitter as well, which I live for. And she's got massive flares. Who remembers when everyone was wearing flares? I remember they used to get like really disgusting and frayed and muddy at the bottom where you'd like step on them during the day. Not cute. And then she has these really cool like pink and gold chunky shoes. I used to love when I was a kid how many accessories the Bratz came with as well. Like there's this whole selection of accessories. She comes with a hairbrush, a second outfit. Now in some versions of the doll, I saw um, this was her main outfit. Um, it depends which version you got, but she's got this really cute top and little denim uh, skirt. And then there is the Bratz Fall 2003 Super Style and Stuff little book with all the Bratz products. Oh my goodness, it just goes on forever. Woo! All the Bratz products. We have the, what is that line called again? F Formal Funk um, Sleepover. Uh, just all this amazing, iconic Bratz memorabilia. Now we have Noli, and it is her Super Sweet 16. And I love this doll. I may be converted to my scene, you guys. This could be it. Obviously, I stuck the transferable on my hand. I feel like I'm totally ready for the year six disco. I mean, one of the things I love about this doll is her hair is so thick and soft and amazing. She's got this gold wrap and a super styling dress with frills at the bottom. Um, now, one of the things I never liked about these dolls was the shoes. They're really loose. And I find it weird that they cover up just normal Barbie feet. That's some kind of weird, like, Hannibal Lecter wearing someone else's skin over yours kind of vibe, which I don't like. But yeah, and I just kind of wish they had their own body sculpt instead of just reusing the Barbie sculpt. But this is still a cute doll. And she came with a spare outfit, 
Um, loads of accessories, including a digital camera. Love that. Do you remember when you used to have to bring your digital camera everywhere you went if you wanted to take photos? So funny. She comes with car keys, but no car. Kind of unfortunate. And she even comes with a present with something inside. And it is nothing. There's literally nothing in there. That's jokes. Okay, well, it's the thought that counts, I guess. And there is this random little kind of thing with lots of pictures on. Now we have this doll. I can't remember her name. It began with a T. And I quite like her. She's giving me kind of like early noughties Missy Elliott vibes. Um, the articulation on this doll is great. She's got movability in the waist and all over her body, which is absolutely fantastic. She has her own little necklace with a T on it. T is in Troy. She's got the same necklace as Gabriella. <laughs> She's got a face which is like halfway bet between Barbie and halfway between Bratz. Um, she's got a cute little beanie. Again, we're going for a double denim vibe. It was clearly all the rage back in the early noughties. Um, but I do like the pinstripes on the kind of baggy trousers. And she's got some little Adidas trainers, which I love. And she's even got socks on, which I really appreciate. Here is the um, stand. It feels a little bit pandering, you know what I mean? The whole aesthetic. Here are her accessories. Um, she comes with a boombox, classic. Uh, and she's got some transferables as well. Um, and using this tool, you can put them on the t-shirt, which I think is quite a cool idea. Now we have everybody's fave, Polly Pocket. And I don't know about you, but I used to chew these fashions so much. Oh my goodness, the smell of the plastic is taking me back, you guys. It's kind of greasy. I don't know if that's happened over time or it was always like that and I didn't notice. But yeah, she's quite cute. This is kind of a bit of a, like, mother of the bride kind of outfit. But, you know, this one isn't Polly. It's like one of her friends, I think. Um, there was a really lack of diversity in the Polly Pocket line, I will say that. But she is still really cute and I really, really, really want to chew this dress right now. Now we have our diva star, and there's really not a lot to say about this doll. It's basically like a kind of human version of Furby. When she has batteries in, she can like talk and stuff, but when the batteries aren't working, like right now, um, there's really very little to do with her. She's just like a lump of plastic. And if you pull her hair up, she looks really, really bizarre. She looks a little bit like E.T. Honestly, I feel like this doll is pretty cursed, pretty possessed. Her head is so huge, like, so disproportionate, it's actually unreal. This is also um, another, uh, what's it called, Diva Stars doll. Later on they gave her the Barbie body. Um, I'm not sure if this is better or worse. At least she has more articulation and removable clothes. Now I thought I'd show off my Betty Spaghetti doll. I used to love these dolls. Again, the smell of the plastic really takes me back. Now, I mean, this is unrealistic body standards if ever I saw it. Look at that thigh gap. Her, her, her legs are literally spaghetti. I love the creative element of these dolls. Obviously, you can change out the legs and stuff. Now, one thing that would be annoying is when I was playing with these dolls when I was a kid is I'd kind of like be running around with a doll and then look back at her and realize I'd lost one of her legs somewhere and her leg was like lying off in the playground. But I love her inline skates. I love the neon colors and the plastic hair was always quite fun because you could like add beads to it and stuff like that. Speaking of creativity, we also have a What's Her Face doll. Now these dolls are also definitely cursed. Obviously I haven't bothered to draw a face on this one, but it never really worked very well. Um, she came with stamps and stuff like that, but they never looked very good and her hair is a wig. Um, not that that's a problem, but I don't know. This one didn't come with a spare wig, so there's kind of no point. And she has very little articulation. Later on, with the What's Her Face doll, they added in a little bit more articulation. This one looks a bit more like a teenager. Um, but again, a very kind of like Hannibal Lecter style. You can like take off her face. She's got like different masks, this one, which is kind of creepy. Um, and again, her hair is a wig. Okay, doll fans, it is time for my ranking of these iconic 90s dolls. Let me know what your ranking would be in the comments. Mine definitely has to go Diva Star at the bottom. I mean, this doll was a bit of a fail for me. Then maybe What's Her Face? Again, a bit of a fail and kind of creepy. Then probably Betty Spaghetti. She's really fun, but maybe a little bit too babyish for me. 
Then Polly Pocket, even though I had a lot of fun with these dolls when I was a kid, um, the lack of diversity is kind of an issue and I prefer brushable hair. Then we've got flavours. Um, I just find them a little bit kind of cliche, but they're still kind of cute and the articulation is great. Then we've got Mycene. I was surprised by this doll. I think she's really cool. But number one, of course, for me, has to be Bratz. Um, the Bratz ruled the early noughties, um, and I absolutely love this doll. She's so funky. Doll fans, thank you for coming on this journey, this nostalgic journey back in time to the early noughties. Please let me know what you thought of these dolls in the comments. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Check me out on Instagram, turn on the bell notifications, blah, 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 um, and have a really good week. Bye. <laughs>